Hello YouTube, and welcome back to another JTOH video. My name is Rare Studios, and today I will share with you the story of how I completed Tower of Difficulty Chart as my first soul crushing tower. But first, what even is this tower? Well, it's a mid insane tower located in Ring 2, created by It Near, Cloy, and Light Synth. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It is considered a soul crushing tower because it's insane or above, because that's what a soul crushing tower means. This tower is actually a revamp. The original one was removed from JTOH on the creator, which was It Near's request. The original Tower of Difficulty chart was actually the first soul crushing tower in JTOH. Back when the original Tower of Difficulty chart was in the game, I had planned to beat that as my first soul crushing tower, but when it was removed, I decided it made the most sense to just beat the revamp instead. In the tower itself, each floor the color of a difficulty from the JTOH difficulties chart, starting at easy and increasing in difficulty as you ascend, going all the way up to catastrophic. My journey to beat this tower started like a year ago, but I began to really grind the tower around January this year. In my live streams, I would typically play tower of difficulty chart for around an hour, then go do something else, for instance playing ring 5 plus towers like in this video. And then around two months ago, I started only playing tower of difficulty chart in the streams. This video is going to be broken down into three parts, some stream highlights, a fail compilation, and then the run where I finally beat the tower. In the top left corner of the screen, I'll put the date of each live stream. Now, corner clipping doesn't work anymore, apparently. I mean, I've tried it, it doesn't. Um, as, as far as I'm aware, like some uh, updated servers that you can press F and it'll do that. So it's really not the same, but it kind of is. But basically you just do the same thing and press F instead of shift lock. Uh, I think it's X on controller and tap in the middle of the screen on mobile. So Tower of Difficulty chart, this will probably be my first soul crushing tower. It's definitely not going to be Toga anymore, Tower of Glitching and Healing, because that's going to be like really nerfed, like way below soul crushing, like probably too intense, um, because of this um, new thing where you can't corner clip. The obby community will decrease if Roblox removes more glitches. I mean, many of these changes, uh, like the developers of various obby related games, like, come on, like obby creator and jtoh they've made some of the they've made some changes to kind of revert those um for example greater than less than keys the the thing where you were in shift lock and you keep holding down right click after disabling shift lock uh it would like un it would get your mouse out of like this mode i guess where you know it changes your camera and also it was the camera was also over sensitive with that change but that wasn't too big of an issue because you can just lower it and of course this one with the corner clips it's highly likely for you to ragdoll on tower of glitching and healing you said that tower was kind of like rng i guess all right i go over here in a way but i guess that kind of makes up for it kind of being more of a remorseless difficulty otherwise, despite it being soul crushing on the difficulty chart. All right, and here we are, almost. Let's just do that, that, and boom. Uh, I know there is a shortcut. I'm 99.9999% sure that the checkpoint is right there once you get onto this floor, but I like to do this at least the, the normal way first. Um, and I guess it kind of helps warm me up too. But the shortcut is that you can high jump. You can either lag high jump from here up to here, um, or you can just normal high jump onto the tightrope and go into climbing animation. This is very exciting content, I know. Oh, right, I forgot. Right, uh, you saw nothing. I totally didn't forget about the corner clip change, even though I was talking about that for like three minutes. Did anybody attempt Tower of Cruel Punishment yet? in ring nine isn't there only like one person who's actually done that there's more than one person who beat tower of cruel punishment oh well hopefully i'll beat it someday but it probably won't be anytime soon maybe i can uh complete it for april fool's day like i did before where i beat tower of elongated runs which was the hardest tower at that time but then not too long after i posted that video like a month or two later ring nine released along with the new hardest towers in the game all right now there is a safe spot right there but I think the best place to get to is the end of this platform, like where you can take your hands off the keyboard, I guess. It's so like right here, I think I'm safe. Yeah, these jumps, I always have a ton of trouble with. I need to get to the edge of there and then land. I predict I'm gonna fall because they go way faster than I think, apparently. <sighs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, thank you, thank you. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus here. I wanna jump there, so I'm not gonna be reading your chat messages for a minute. Okay. Ugh, I hate when you have to go around ladders like these. They're pretty easy, just not for me for some reason. Do I want a ladder flick? Hold on. Do I want a ladder flick here or just like jump and do shift lock midair? Do any of you know? Probably someone does. Jump and shift lock midair. Hold on. Let me zoom out. 
or zoom in and then come on come on come on thank you thank you thank you thank you probably want to do that here okay this is a new personal best by the way i'm pretty sure okay let's get like right on the edge here and then ladder flicker please thank you i'm like i'm just begging the game to let me complete the tower oh was that not what i was supposed to do there we go okay now i'm starting to get kind of nervous Okay, here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are. Terrifying. I know this isn't the last floor, but it's the hardest floor, apparently. Probably about to fall, realistically. Please, 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 please. Let's see, I'm gonna wrap around and jump on here. Ugh, how did I not fall? Now, who knows? I could just completely first try this. I did that with floor nine, Tower of True Skill. So, I guess you never know. I want a ladder flick here, but I'm afraid I'm gonna be too nervous and fail. Okay, never mind. Just take a deep... <gasps> Okay, that probably, how did I, you know, we won't, we won't question that. We won't question that. I turned on shift lock. <laughs> that gasp though. Okay, so I want to go in the corner. Maybe here is good. Please, please, please. No, 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 no! You feel like you're horrible at obvious because you have 126 towers and only beaten two remorselesses with no soul crushings. You've beaten like three to four remorselesses and I, or I, what? Yeah, I read, yeah, I read that. <laughs> well, I've only beaten 76 towers, so you've beaten more than me, if that makes you feel better. But if you want to beat harder towers, then of course practice time will help. Like the actual game and practice time like taking time to practice the tower if you don't know i also often build towers in obby creator so like building obbies too that that also kind of helps to improve because you get familiar with how the jumps are set up i suppose and therefore how to actually perform the different jumps and glitches and stuff it's a sad story of me when i failed the last tightrope of tower of difficulty chart because i was so excited and failed it i'll try to not have that happen to me okay now time for this conveyor section which i don't like i like to go on the edges there yeah i've I've, de I've gotten that like the past three times i've done that in a row i've definitely figured out the strategy for that but yeah i love when that happens don't you do i have ring seven <clears throat> yeah i do hold on let me get some water okay i suppose now would be an appropriate time to tell this story so this water bottle is made of like really thin plastic so it's super loud like Listen to that. That was probably extremely loud. I'm not sorry. Um, so the other day I was in math class, and so uh, I was thirsty. So I grabbed my water bottle, and grabbing it was fine, but trying to put it back into my backpack. So while the teacher was teaching, it was just... Yeah, and then everyone was staring at me, and it was slightly embarrassing. Slightly. I think everyone was staring at me, and I didn't want to stare back because reasons. Why don't they make Tower of Difficulty short catastrophic? Because it's not catastrophic. I mean, it is kind of interesting to think about how they chose the difficulty. Because, obviously, the difficulty is very inconsistent on this tower. Which is, like, kind of the point. Usually that's used in a, like, with a bad connotation, I guess. Because, like, you'd want a consistent difficulty. But you would take the average difficulty, I would assume, of all the jumps. Uh, and that actually reminds me of a different thing I thought about one time. What if there was, like, instead- I think the way they choose difficulties is, like, uh, the community actually gets to vote on what difficulty they think it should be. But what if there was like a more concrete way, I guess, of describing that? Like what if each jump has its own system of how to decide how many like difficulty points, I guess it could be called, to decide the difficulty. So let's say this jump, that's a conveyor long jump thing with conveyors going in that direction. So that would be a specific type of jump. And then depending on how like far between the parts, that's how many points how many difficulty points that jump is worth and so they count up all the points of each jump um even if it's not a jump like maybe a wall hop well that's still kind of a jump but like maybe a glitch too depending on how many difficulty points a tower gets that's how many di or how much how the how the difficulty is decided so like you know remorseless could be whatever number through whatever number 
insane could be whatever number through whatever number. And so, like, each difficulty is a certain range of those points. Now, I doubt that's ever going to become the system they use to decide the difficulties of towers, but I thought about that one time, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Does this count as a wacky frame because of the outside part? I assume you're talking about that. Consider that. I wouldn't consider it because it's probably just, like, the gap you'd put in the wall if it was a normal outside section, and then you just put more frame parts here, and it just happens to be the same color, which, I mean, would make sense. So, I would say no. Okay, now right here, I found go to the corner of this truss. <laughs> Come on! We're back to here again. Same, same thing, same thing, same thing. Why? I almost saved it and it would have been less annoying, but... Ugh. I love this game. You may have noticed the dates on the stream highlight section, like there was a three month gap or whatever. It's just because I don't feel like searching through all the streams because that would take forever. And I'm not really looking to stay up till 2.30 a.m. editing like I did editing this video. But next up is the fail compilation. Now if I were to include every fail, then this video would be like an hour long because I would estimate there were at least like 200 or 300 fails. This will still include a lot of the fails that really made beating this tower a challenge. I just couldn't stop falling in the dumbest and randomest ways. But this fail compilation will also include some fails where I rage quit and some of the worst fails from the tower. Okay, I fell. I very rarely, um, for like, ugh. Okay, now this X pusher is really annoying. It doesn't like me because it does that. Sometimes I'm able to stay on it and then I actually am able to get on the truss. Why did I die again? I predict I'm going to fall because they go way faster than I think, apparently. <sighs> Maybe here is good. Please, please, please. No, 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 no. <sighs> no. I want to... And then this is supposed to be... And I sort of... <laughs> Come on. Uh, if I... What? Okay. <sighs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Can I make this jump? No, I can't. Come on. Like, if I don't die, which I... Come on. This tower, then... What? Now we want to not do that. Save it again. Nope, never mind. But, yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> Anyone would talk. <sighs> nice, nice. What did I do wrong there? And it did work. There we go. Oh, never mind. What let me jump that time? Are you kidding me? So now, it, 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 come on. Why did I? Why did I not think I made the jump? Now right here, I found. Go to the corner of this truss. <laughs> come on. <sighs> Same, same thing, same thing, same thing. Why? <sighs> okay, now we're back at terrifying. Well, not yet. Are you kidding me? And now it's time for me to stop talking and focus. Nope. Okay, last time I fell in the same way. Or <laughs> in a previous attempt. Nope. <laughs> ah! Let's go to practice time. Go a little bit more left, but not too much. Okay. I've practiced this upcoming ladder flick. Yeah, I failed like 10 jumps from the end of the tower. If you couldn't tell, what went wrong was that I missed the truss flick off the spinner. RIP. Oh, you thought I only failed that twice? Oh no, I failed the exact same jump around 30 minutes later. Let's not repeat exactly what happened last time. We repeated Almost exactly what happened. Last 
Oh, you thought I only failed the final stretch twice? Oh no, I failed like five jumps from the end in a different stream. Come on. Do this. Just like pointless. Ah! Why? Why? <sighs> oh, you thought I only failed the final stretch three times? Well, you're right, because that concludes the fail compilation. Finally, the run. On May 14th, 2022, I began a stream that I would say was like all the others, but I did name it this instead of this because Zone 6 had released that day. Or maybe it was like the day before that, but it had released like around that time. Anyway, about an hour and 16 minutes into the stream, I fell through the safety net on floor 6 and then restarted a new run of the tower. Now I'm going to be doing post-commentary over this run except for the end because I wasn't really talking about the tower at all during this. If you want to see the unedited run though, I'll link the stream in the description and you can skip to this time in that stream to see where the run begins. So let's take a look at the run. Uh, nothing like recording a tower guide at 12.20 a.m. It's also raining outside my house right now. I don't know if you can hear that. But first, to get into the tower, you need to go to the psychologically unsafe towers, and then go to this, like, part here, and then press F to corner clip, because corner clips were patched. Once in the tower, um, it's pretty easy to follow where you're supposed to go for the first five floors. With not very much practice, you can honestly complete it in, like, two minutes or less. But there are a few shortcuts, such as this one, where you jump to this invisible truss on easy, and then you can jump on those, there's two, there's one of those invisible studs on either side. And look at that, you can complete the first floor in under 30 seconds. And then on medium, you just need to follow this path, and then there's some studs here. The one where you jump up to hard difficulty, that one is a little bit higher to jump up to, so just know that. Now for the spinners, the kill bricks are can collide true, but you can jump on top of the kill bricks if you want, but I think it's slower. Still pretty easy. Now there's an invisible conveyor there, and then an invisible truss and an invisible stud. Well, not invisible, it's mostly invisible. You can still see it a little bit. And then you go across these tight ropes on difficult. If you want, you can line them up carefully or whatever, but they're pretty easy if you just rush them and there's not much on the line. On this X pusher thing, just use shift lock and then like do that, it's pretty easy. Now here, you don't even need to use the second X pusher trampoline, you can just do that. And then some wraparounds, you can line them up carefully if you want. And then you can actually kind of jump straight to there and then like, it doesn't really skip that much, but it skips like three jumps, but yeah, kind of worth doing that shortcut. And then this is supposed to be a shadow section, but it, they're only slightly transparent because this is challenging and a shadow section is above challenging. I would recommend lining up this tightrope and then these tightropes, I recommend you go to the very edge, kind of like how you'd set up a long jump and then press shift lock like back towards the ledge midair. For some reason, I had trouble on those super easy head hitters. Anyway, now we're on intense. Now there is a shortcut where you can high jump to the tightrope right here, or you can lag high jump on top of the platform. But once per run, I like to complete the section normally, just in case there's a checkpoint I'm missing, even though I'm 99% sure that it's at like the gap in the floor right before intense. And I guess it gets me more warmed up anyway, even though this was over an hour into the stream. After that, the rest of, of intense is pretty straightforward. Um, there are two corner clips, or I think they're book clips because they look kind of like a book. Once again, just press F. Do be careful of your health. I have died to kill bricks here in the past. If you don't know how to do these, put your character like face first into the wall and then type slash E dance two into the chat. And then when, when you're to the far right in the animation, press shift. Make sure your camera is facing the correct direction. And this one, you should press shift and space, kind of like you would for a shift and space ladder flick so that you can make it to the platform. And then jumping off the half stud platform, I like to treat it like a long jump and you can go on either side. I prefer going to the right. Now here you need to do a ladder flick or trust flick. I prefer to do uh, shift and space for that one. And then this X pusher, I failed like so many times. Like, I don't know. Look at what I did here and you'll see the angle you should go at turned to the left. That way you will actually make the jump. Of course, actually make sure you're going to make it onto the ledge though. Um, just press forward on these um, conveyors, but then also on the ones that go left and right, press A and D going in the opposite direction of the conveyor. So for example, if the Conveyor's going left, press D. If it's going right, press A. Still hold down W. Kind of just do the same motion if you're on mobile, I guess. For this outside section, first carefully do a wraparound to land and climbing animation on the ladder. Like, just make sure you turn all the way around so that you can actually go into climbing animation. Then ladder flick up. And now for this one, this can be a little bit tricky, but if you don't get it, it's fine. And then press F to corner clip. And then I would not recommend holding space on those conveyors. Just make sure you time them. And then a walk around there. If you get if you practice walk arounds, then those are pretty easy. There's another one here. 
and then um, some ladder flicks. I like to do a 180 ladder flick, maybe shift and space ladder flick onto that following platform will, will work better. And then this conveyor section is actually a lot easier than it looks. Just hold space pretty much the entire time, other than when you're on like the safe platforms, and you should be good. Just also press the movement keys and A and D or whatever, so that you can actually move left and right. You don't really need to worry about those kill bricks there. They do, like, no damage, as long as you go quickly. Make sure you time that right, also easier than it looks. On those conveyors, which I had trouble with at first, go to the left of them. Like, make it so, like, half your character is over to the left of them. That way you can make it around this wall. Now you have an easy wraparound right here, and then I recommend going at an angle backwards, kind of like I was doing here, to line up this jump. And then do a wall boost, which is basically where you push your character into the wall before you like when you're doing a long jump on that long jump so that way you can actually land it now i had a ton of trouble on these trusses like and i don't know why try your best not to rush them and not do anything stupid here so then what i recommend doing is going to the point where your head is about at the halfway point or like at the point between the truss and the platform above it and then just go around and then do the ladder flick now do a long jump there i like to do it in i like to do it in first person and then another long jump I kind of shook my camera for some reason, but honestly, I only failed that jump like once. Now for this ledge grab. It's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, like that's all you do. It's just a ledge grab. Um, I like to do shift and space on that ladder flick. Then hold space on this conveyor and go around to the left. Go underneath it, jump, and then climb up this ladder. Then more holding space, and then this section is pretty easy. Just don't rush it, and you should be fine. So now this... Um, again, just try not to rush it again. <laughs> you need to go on top of the spinner and then go over here. And make sure to keep an eye on your health too, because I died to kill bricks there, like you saw in the fail compilation. Now you're on terrifying. Do this trust walk, do this trust flick, jump around this wraparound. Yeah, terrifying is ironically the hardest floor of the tower, not catastrophic. Um, I was going pretty fast, but I'd recommend very much taking your time here. Well, I do slow down as I go through this floor. And I would highly recommend doing practice time, or official practice lobby as it's called, to help you learn the jumps, like where you should ladder flick, where you should do space and then shift, rather than shift and space at the same time, such as on this trust section, as well as what you found personally to be the best strategy for you to do certain jumps, even though I will be helping explain those. Now here, uh, it's just a ladder flick. Now these wraparounds are pretty challenging, so just be careful on them. Try not to get too nervous and not turn your mouse enough. And then kind of do on that jump like wrap around sort of to get onto that ledge. And then another wrap around and then hold space to go onto that conveyor. Then do the conveyor launch. Don't miss it like I did there. I only failed this once though. It's really easy. Just I, I guess I probably just hit space too early. You'll land on the truss and then do some truss flicks and then for this lodge. Just do what I did there. Um, it's easier than it looks and that glitch is not particularly RNG. Now climb down to the bottom of this truss here, as like, well not completely to the bottom, just about as much as I did. You don't want to go too far and then fall off the truss. Turn your camera like this to like push your character back when it hits that um, like pole thing. That way you go into climbing animation and can do the ledge grab. Do the wraparound, and then this is the funny truss section, which is like the hardest section in the entire tower. What you want to do is go to the corner of this truss, turn it like a that, that degree angle, around a 45, and then jump and press shift, not shift in space. Then do the same thing there, jump, press shift, but you don't need to turn at any angle, just like go directly forward or whatever. Make sure you go a little bit to the left though after you jump so you get onto the next truss. Then you have some wraparounds, which if you're pretty nervous, then they might be a little bit tricky, but just try your best to control your nerves here. Then we have this uh, conveyor thing, which is easier than it looks. Just try to time that. Go to like the furthest forward point on that second conveyor. Now on this first truss, I recommend doing a normal ladder flick, but without the space. So just turn your camera. Then on this one, I recommend doing a shift in space ladder flick, but without the space. That's what I found to work best for me on those trusses. That wraparound onto that truss is pretty easy. And now you're at the final floor. So I'll turn it over to live commentary me. We're at catastrophic, we're at catastrophic. Let me tell everyone. Floor 10 of Tower of Difficulty chart. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna do anything yet. Oh, let me align myself. Okay, I think this is good. I'm gonna fail these. Reverse psychology. Aha. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. 
we're making good progress. Okay, I think we're lined up. Let's not rush this. Uh. Okay. 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 Okay, let's heal. Come on, I got this, I got this, I got this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay. If I fail here, I'm going to lose it for real. New personal best, new personal best, new personal best. Let's just rush it, I don't care. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Print screen. Yes, yes, let's go! Oh my gosh, we did it! Yes! I think it took the screenshot. Where is this actually located? Underneath the map? It used to be located in the rock underneath Tower of Difficulty chart, and you could actually, like, cheese the tower by laugh clip. Well, first, you'd go up to Intense, hit the checkpoint, go back down, laugh clip outside of the tower, because you could do that back then, and then do some crazy flat wall corner clip thing to get into this room and then get to the wind pad. Congratulations, you've beaten the Tower of Difficulty chart. The tower itself represents the difficulty chart, which can be found in the lobby. Soon the tower was revamped by experienced builders. To leave, touch the green brick right beneath me. Not good enough of a message behind you? Well, read this then. You should be really proud of yourself for beating this tower. Not a whole lot of people are able to actually do it, especially with how difficult the last three floors get. Give yourself a well-deserved pat on the back. This was your first- if this was your first soul crushing, give everyone whom are currently stuck on it a good flexing. Good luck with any future soul crushing towers you may face. This is only the first of many you will be challenged by. Let's go! How, how long was that run? 24.59.02. My advice for the final floor is really just not to fail due to being nervous and don't rush anything. Floor 10 is ironically easier than floor 9, so just try your best to be careful. I also would highly recommend going into the practice place to practice the final two floors as well as anything else in the tower you want to practice. So I had finally completed Tower of Difficulty chart. I still had plenty of time left to stream, so I decided to head to zone 4 for the first time. If you want to see that, check out the video from not Thursday, but the Thursday before that, which is in the top right corner. So what's next? Well, it's almost summer vacation for me, so hopefully, watch it when you see this, it will be summer vacation. So hopefully I'll be able to stream way more and beat higher difficulty towers. I think my next soul crushing tower is going to be Tower of Double Trouble, and that's in zone 2. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss that or any other videos or live streams. So, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and also for watching the streams if you did, even after I failed literally hundreds of times. So with that, I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day.